Hello everybody and welcome back to Victoria 3 Dev Diary number 2 on Capacities. I am your host, Chewy Shoot. If you uh, do not know me, I suggest you subscribe because there's going to be plenty of Victoria 3 content here in the future. I'm currently doing a bit of Victoria 2 content if you would like some Let's Play style content. And we're going to be going over each week's Dev Diaries up until the release of Victoria 3. So if you're going to want more of that information, I suggest you subscribe to the channel. And if you wouldn't mind, please do leave a like. It does help us out a ton. So this dev diary has been written by Wiz himself. Hello and welcome back to another Victoria 3 dev diary. Today, we'll be talking about three of the four of the main currencies of the game. Uh oh, <laughs> namely capacities. The last being money, which will of course come back to later. We mentioned in the very first dev diary, there is no mana in Vicky 3 since the dev diary is about the game's currencies. I want to be clear on what is what I mean by that. There will be no mana. We mean that the resources in Victoria 3 arise and are spent in clearly defined ways that are parts of the simulation, not from an overly abstract concept or a vague idea. This is, of course, uh, there are, of course, some degrees of abstraction involved. All games are abstractions after all, but we want all the game's currencies to be strongly rooted in the mechanics and not feel arbitrary. I understand that. Um, in E4, which is my title, you got your bird mana, your paper mana, and your sword mana, and you just spend them on kind of random things. Most of the time it makes sense what you're spending it on, but it's kind of like, where? what is this mana? What is this money? Where does it come from? It just kind of gets created over time so this makes this this makes sense i like this so far uh but enough uh enough about that and on to capacities what exactly are they well for starters calling um, calling them currencies is actually not accurate capacities are not a pooled resource and not accumulated or spent but instead have a constant generation and a constant usage similar for example for ad ad administrative capacity is solaris uh, you generally want to keep your usage from exceeding your generation. Each capacity represents one specific area of your nation's ability to govern and is used solely for matters relating to that area. As mentioned, capacities are not accumulated, so excess generation is not pooled, but instead there is an effect for each capacity which is positive if generation exceeds usage and quite negative if usage exceeds generation. A country that incorporates territories left and right without expanding its bureaucratic core may quickly find itself mired in debt as tax collectors collapse under the strain. This is a good. So I kind of like this. It means you want these points coming in. And uh, if you go over it, you get punished very heavily. If you're under it, you get benefits. So I like that. That's good. Uh, bureaucracy represents a nation's ability to govern. Instead, in, uh, invest in the collect taxes in its incorporated territory. Uh, it is produced by the government administration building there, there, uh, where many nations bureaucrats will be employed. All of the nation's incorporated states use a base amount of bureaucracy uh, which increases the size of their population with the with the size of the population and increases further by each institution such as education or police uh, more on those later Ooh. in a country that is invested in oh that a country has invested in overall the purpose of bureaucracy is to ensure that there is not a cost there is a cost to ruling over taxing and providing for your population administering china should not be cheap makes sense the swedish bureaucracy is currently a bit overworked and uh, the country could certainly benefit from their government administration building or two or from another one. So you can see here, uh, they only have 21% bureaucracy deficit or they have minus 53 bureaucracy, which is giving them a huge tax waste. Okay. Total generation of 250 bureaucracy is due to the base and then administration or government administration in Svelin. Uh, your total use of uh, 303. So you can see that they're over by 53 uh, because they have too many pops in incorporated states. So that means they basically uh, kind of get assume like cored up too much land, kind of like over to their governing capacity, so to speak, if you're an EU4 person. Authority represents the head state's personal power and ability to enact change in the country through decree. It is generated from your laws generally. The more repressive than authoritarian the country, the more authority it will generate and has used a variety of actions as enacting decrees in specific states, interacting with interest groups, and promoting or banning certain types of goods. Overall, the purpose of authority is to create an interesting trade-off between more and less authoritarian societies by shifting and distributing of power, or by shifting the distribution of power away from the pops into the hands of the ruler, your ability to rule by decree is increased and vice versa. The Swedish king has the more authority at his disposal than he is currently using, slightly speeding up the rate at which laws can be passed. Okay, so he is gaining. Okay, so they have an excess to authority, which gives enactment rate of higher. So I guess that means if, if a king is seen as not using their power, then they are given 
free reign to pass more reforms politically. That that makes sense. Kind of like the, the people will respect you a bit more because they're not really viewing you as a despot or anything like that, right? So that's good. I like that. Influence represents a country's ability to conduct diplomacy and its reach on the global stage it is generally or generated primarily from your rank, great power. Uh, great powers have more influence than major powers and so on. That makes sense. And it's used to support ongoing diplomatic actions and pacts, such as improving relations, alliances, trade deals, subjects, and so on. Overall, the purpose of influence is to force players to make interesting choices about which foreign countries they want to build strong diplomatic relations with. So this is the same as it was in um, in uh, Vicky 2, by the sounds of it. Either that, or it's like maybe you get it and uh, spend it in a bit of a different way. But you can say Sweden has a, pen a penalty of unused influence and could certainly afford to support another diplomatic pact or two. Uh, so you can see here they have a hundred percent or more excess influence So it looks like they're not using any of it or no They're using a very little bit of it because they have a PU on Norway and they're improving relations with Prussia But they have 530 left over that they could use which is cool That's all for today. Join us next week as I'm covering yet another topic. That's fundamental to victory three buildings See you soon. Very cool. All right So these things I think are very interesting I like the idea of figuring out you know the currencies of the game how they're used how to manage them kind of coming up with a, a meta as to how it role plays in but also how you use it in an optimal way obviously being a uh, paradox game there's going to be a lot of people that are looking specifically for the optimal game strategy and I'm sure people will find it so very good I will give it a uh, a like so there you go. All right, guys. Well, that is it for this one. So next week, join me for uh, Dev Diary number three on buildings. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, please do show your support. Leave a like, subscribe, ding the bell. I do also have a Patreon if you'd like to support me as well as I have a merch store. It's going to be linked in the description below if you want to support me. And we do have a Discord as well. Um, there's a really cool community over there. And I really do enjoy hanging out with people in my Discord. But that's all I got for you for today. This is Chewy Shoot, and I'll catch you guys later. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Big special thanks to my top May supporters on Patreon. Drunk Binary, Bloodbound, Mr. McFlu, DeVos Sander, Angelic, Bouncer Steve, Sprocket, Batman on Deck, M. Dressel, R. Lawrence, Tharup, The J. Baller, Blonde Damon, Jacko R. Harvest, Corbett, Shankopotamus, T. Jarden, A. Vickman, Glad, Natsuki, Harry, A. Murata, J. Cutchell, N. Winkler, R. J. Pilot, Solier, and many more.